One of my favorite parts about linear algebra is that there is this very intuitive, very nice, very beautiful geometric story that goes along with it. And indeed, for all the time that we spend in the algebraic world, where we've got equations and we're doing algebraic manipulations of those equations, there should always be said a geometric analog. And indeed, the geometric and the algebraic, they really work well together, and, and the intuition and the results that you get from one can inform the other. So let's just start to scratch the surface of what this looks like for systems of linear equations in two dimensions. Now, I'm going to begin not with a system. I'm going to begin with a single linear equation in two dimensions. I'm going to imagine this equation, 2x plus y is equal to 4. So in this case, I have a, a coefficient 2. If you prefer, you can imagine that there's a, a little coefficient 1 sitting in front of the y there, and then it's equal to some constant 4. Now, we've seen equations like this. In fact, I could manipulate it and write it like this. This is y equal to minus 2x. I'm taking the 2x to the other side and plus 4. And if I do it in this form, it's the standard equation of a line that we've seen back in high school. y is equal to mx plus b. So it's a slope of minus 2 and a y-intercept of 4. And I've got this graph here, and I can figure out what it's going to be. So the y-intercept is going to be up here at 4. And then if I look at the x-intercept, when y is equal to 0, that's when x is equal to 2. So it does something that looks a little bit like this, comes down through 4, and then goes down here to x equal to 2. So there we have it. This line with I refer to as L is equal to the solution set. In other words, if I'm in two dimensions, if I'm in R2, so there's two different variables, and I have just a single linear equation, it would appear to be that the solution to that equation is going to be a line. So now let me generalize just a little bit. Here we had 2x plus 1 is equal to 4. Let me now imagine that I have ax plus by is equal to c. So, so instead of having specific numbers, I've, I've let them be a little bit arbitrary here. And we should be thinking that the solution to this appears to be a line in the case of a is 2 and b is 1 and c is 4 here. But is it always a line? Well, let me try to manipulate around. Uh, if I want to put it into sort of the standard form here, I would want to say that this is equal to minus ax plus c, and then I need to divide out by my b here. So I'm going to divide out by b, I'm going to divide out by b. And so it kind of looks like I have a slope here of minus a divided out by b. But there's a problem. This only works, this is only valid if my b is not equal to zero. So I'm going to claim that there's actually going to be two different possibility, two different cases to investigate. The first case is this one that we've just written down where we have b not equal to zero and we just get some law. And I don't know exactly where to draw it because I haven't given a specific a, b, and c, but it's some equation of a line because there's no division by zero problems. And therefore there's infinitely many solutions. There are infinitely many different points, all the different points that are on the line that all solve that particular equation. But my second case is going to be, well, what happens if b is equal to zero? Now, if I go back to the original one, I've got this b term here, that would all be going to zero, and I'd be left with ax equal to c. And then ax equal to c is actually, it, it depends as well. If I can divide out by my a, then what I would be getting here would just be x is equal to c divided by a, and, and that would be fine. That's just x is a constant. That's a vertical line. But it again depends on my a being non-zero. So in my case two, I'm also going to assume that my a is equal to zero. In other words, I'm in an example like 0x plus 0y is equal to, and I'm going to choose something non-zero on the right-hand side, like 1. And in this scenario, there are zero solutions. So in other words, I have these two different possibilities. I have infinitely many solutions. That's going to happen when I get an equation of line. I have zero solutions where you're just like, this doesn't make any sense. It's zero on one side and something non-zero on the other. 
And those are the only two different cases that I can think of for just a single equation in two dimensions.